is Janaea Sarantakos and I am the Rowan County 4-H agent. Today I'm going to be talking with you about some basic first aid skills. In all situations, the first thing that you should do in an emergency is size up the scene, which just means uh, make sure that the scene is safe for you to enter to provide care or assistance. After you determine you are safe, uh, direct one person to call 911. Then finally, you'll uh, need to wear gloves and be begin to provide first aid. So next is first aid for strains, sprains, and bruises. Uh, and the best thing to do is to think RICE, the acronym RICE. So R stands for rest. You're gonna stop and rest the area as soon as it starts hurting. Uh, ice. I is for icing. Uh, ice can make a huge difference to any sort of injury. You should apply ice immediately, but not directly to the skin. Wrap the ice in a washcloth or put a bag around it, plastic bag around it. If you don't have an ice pack handy, you can use whatever's in your kitchen if you're at home. So a bag of frozen peas, a chilled can of soda, or just a bucket of water. Check around your house. Um, or your environment right now and brainstorm a list of things that could be used as an ice pack. Next is C for compress. So use some kind of elastic bandage or ACE bandage that's really stretchy to wrap the injury firmly, but be sure not to cut off the blood flow. Then your next step will be to apply ice over top of the bandage. Finally is E, it stands for elevate. So raise this injured area above your heart. Uh, gravity will most definitely help uh, keep the swelling down. <music> Providing first aid for stings. So first of all, you need to remove the stinger. Um, make sure that you wash the area with soap and water three or four times uh, after the injury has occurred. You can apply a cold pack or an ice pack wrapped in a cloth, again, not directly to the skin. Uh, apply a paste of baking soda and water mixed together for 10 to 20 minutes. Just let it rest on the area and then you can kind of brush it off once it dries completely. Uh, make sure that you monitor the patient or yourself uh, for an allergic reaction. Lots of people are allergic to bee and wasp stings. So normal reactions include some sort of warm or red puffy skin with a white spot in the middle, uh, which then will later cause some itching or maybe some pain. Um, and allergic reaction symptoms include a large, very large area of swelling, any sort of hives, um, abnormal breathing, tightness in the chest, dizziness, fainting, or nausea or vomiting. So immediately call 911 if you know that the patient is allergic to bees or wasps and then start this process of removing the stinger, finding some, uh, washing the area and then finding some ice. So first aid for cuts and scrapes. First of all, you need to stop the bleeding. Um, use some sort of gauze pad or uh, uh, to apply pressure and then elevate the area until the bleeding stops. Uh, make, second, you need to make sure that it's clean. Uh, wash your hands and then wash the cut or the scrape. Third, a scrape needs extra rinsing to get out all of the dirt. Rinse several times with antiseptic wash or have the person wash their hands or the area that's affected. Uh, use a clean gauze to brush across the wound if necessary, and be sure to be gentle. Uh, this is a scrape after all. Uh, leave the scrape uncovered unless it will be exposed to a lot of dirt. Uh, lastly, if it's a, a cut, a cut is a slice through the skin. So it should be rinsed with antiseptic wash and left to dry. Uh, apply a small amount of antibiotic cream once it's started to, to heal itself, uh, once the blood has stopped, and then you can apply a Band-Aid. Um, a gaping cut is best treated with a butterfly bandage, so you can kind of gauge whether or not uh, a large wound needs to be uh, handled further by an emergency room or a doctor or something like that versus if you just, you know, accidentally uh, nick yourself while you're cutting an apple or something like that.
first aid for burns. First degree burns are uh, red or some sort of discolored skin. If you accidentally touch the side of a pot while you're boiling water or um, just barely graze the top of, of your stove or something like that. Um, usually it's sort of an instantaneous reaction that's just very pale red and uh, or some kind of discolored once it starts to heal. A second degree burn um, has a blister or red skin. If the skin is not broken, uh, the best thing you can do is to immerse the wound in cold, not ice water, or place it under running cold water. Then you'll need to apply, lightly apply a cold clean cloth that has been wrung out. So just run it under the sink and then wring it out and then put it over top of the wound. Then you'll need to gently blot dry the area with some sterile gauze or clean cloth and then cover loosely with a dry, sterile, non-adhesive dressing. Uh, third degree burns are much more serious. They typically have white or charred skin. Um, you immediately need to call 911. Uh, remove any clothing that comes off easily from the burned area and cover lightly with a dry, sterile, non-adhesive dressing or a clean, dry cloth. Um, and then you'll need to elevate, uh, if it's an arm or a leg, elevate those, those limbs higher than the heart um, and avoid any sort of moving or friction or pressure. First aid for shock. Shock is a critical condition brought on by the sudden drop in blood flow to the body. Uh, shock may result from trauma, heat stroke, blood loss, an allergic reaction, severe infection, poisoning, severe burns, or other causes. When a person is in shock, their organs are not getting enough blood or oxygen. If untreated, this can lead to permanent organ damage or even death. Signs and symptoms of shock can vary on circumstance and may include cool, clammy skin, pale or ashen skin, a bluish tinge to the lips or fingernails, rapid pulse, rapid breathing, nausea or vomiting, enlarged pupils, weakness or fatigue, dizziness or fainting, changes in mental status or behavior such as anxiousness or agitation, um, and you should always uh, seek medical care as soon as you recognize these symptoms. If you suspect a person is in shock, call 911 immediately. Then take these next steps. First, lay the person down and elevate the legs and feet slightly, unless you think this may cause pain or further injury. Keep the person still and do not move them unless it is absolutely necessary. Uh, if the person loses consciousness or, or shows no signs of life, then you might need to begin CPR. Um, Loosen any tight clothing and if needed, cover the person with a blanket to prevent um, chilling. Uh, do not let this person eat or drink anything. If you suspect the person is having an allergic reaction um, and you have access to an EpiPen, uh, use it according to its instructions. They're on the, on the outside label and give direct perfect instructions on, on how to use it. If the person is bleeding, uh, hold pressure on the bleeding area and use a towel or a sheet. If the person vomits or begins bleeding from the mouth um, and no spinal injury is suspected, go ahead and turn them on their side to prevent choking. A common ailment is nosebleeds, especially in the summer, spring, and fall uh, around those seasonal allergy type uh, times. So. First, you need to stand up or sit up if you're laying down. Um, grab a tissue or a washcloth to catch the blood. Tip your head forward so that the blood drains out of your nose. Uh, pinch the lower soft part of your nose between your thumb and finger, and then you'll open your mouth to breathe. Um, hold your nose for about 10 minutes or uh, until the bleeding really does stop. Uh, 10 minutes is a key rule. Try not to cheat that. Repeat these steps until the bleeding completely stops and be sure not to pick or rub or blow your nose for a couple of days. Uh, if the bleeding persists for more than 15 or 20 minutes, then you should seek the doctor and call a doctor.
first aid for alcohol overdose. So first off, an alcohol overdose occurs when there's too much alcohol in the bloodstream. Um, that areas of the brain that control basic life supporting functions like breathing, heart rate, and temperature control uh, begin to shut down. Symptoms of alcohol overdose include mental confusion, difficulty remaining conscious, vomiting, seizures, uh, trouble breathing, slow heart rate, clammy skin, dulled responses uh, such as no gag reflex, which uh, prevents choking, and extremely low body temperature. Alcohol overdoses can lead to permanent brain damage or even death. Uh, when the blood alcohol concentration reaches high levels, blackouts, which is gaps in memory, or loss of consciousness, uh, passing out, and death can occur. The blood alcohol concentration can continue to rise even when a person has stopped drinking or is unconscious. So alcohol in the stomach and intestine continues to enter the bloodstream and circulate throughout the whole body. It's dangerous to assume that an unconscious person will be fine sleeping it off. Uh, one potential danger of alcohol overdose is choking on one's uh, own vomit. So alcohol is a, it, at very high levels can hinder uh, signals in the brain that control automatic responses such as the gag reflex. Uh, with no gag reflex, a person who drinks to a point of passing out uh, is in danger of choking on their own vomit uh, and dying from lack of oxygen. So some critical signs and symptoms of an alcohol overdose include mental confusion or some sort of stupor, uh, difficulty remaining conscious uh, or an inability to wake up, uh, vomiting, seizures, slowed breathing, uh, which is fewer than eight breaths from, per minute, irregular breathing, uh, 10 seconds or more between breaths, slow heart rate, clammy skin, dulled responses such as no gag reflex, um, and extremely low body temperature or bluish skin or paleness. Know the, the danger signals and if you suspect that someone has an alcohol overdose, call 911 for help immediately. Do not wait for the person to have all of the symptoms and be aware that a person who has passed out can die. Um, don't play doctor. Uh, cold showers, hot coffee, and walking do not reverse the effects of alcohol overdose and could actually make things really a lot worse. So while waiting for medical help to arrive, um, be prepared to provide information to the responders, including the type and amount of alcohol the person drank, other drugs he or she took, uh, if you know them, and any health information that you know about the person, such as medications that they're taking, allergies to medications, and any pre-existing health conditions. Do not leave an intoxicated person alone um, because they are at risk for falling or choking. Uh, keep the person on the ground in a sitting or partially upright position rather than in a chair. Uh, help a person who is vomiting, have them uh, lean forward to prevent choking. And if a, if a person is unconscious or lying down, roll them over to one side with an ear towards the ground and an arm up to uh, prevent choking. The bystander effect and the Good Samaritan law. The term bystander effects uh, refers to the phenomenon in which the greater the number of people present, the less likely people are to help a person in distress. When an emergency occurs, observers are more likely to act if there are few or no witnesses. Uh, being a part of a large crowd makes it so no single person uh, must take responsibility for an action or an inaction. The Good Samaritan laws are written to encourage bystanders to get involved in these and other emergency situations without fear that they will be sued for their actions uh, if it inadvertently contributes to a person's further injury or death. It's important as seconds even count uh, in an emergency and, and giving first aid before the ambulance arrives can be the difference whether someone lives or dies. Kentucky's Good Samaritan laws include immunity from civil liability for uh, the user of an AED, a non-liability of licenses for emergency care, so basically no person licensed under uh, 
this community who in good faith renders an emergency care at the scene, um, they will not be held liable for uh, any acts or omissions of the person that's rendering the care. And then finally, there's a non-liability of licenses or certifications uh, for emergency care. Basically, you do not have to have an official CPR first aid AED certification in order to provide basic skills uh, to help keep someone alive. Thanks so much for joining me for this uh, discussion about basic first aid skills. Uh, hopefully you guys learned a little bit about the signs of alcohol poisoning, how to treat basic ailments such as bleeding, shock, fractures, bee stings, and alcohol poisoning. Um, you should have learned a little bit about the bystander effect and uh, what Good Samaritan laws are. And finally, um, hopefully you've learned a little bit about how to handle any emergency situation that you could run into as a young adult. Just remember, it's really important to keep calm and be direct when giving instructions with other people around you, such as giving a direct point and call you, call 911, things like that. Again, thanks so much for joining me and uh, we'll see you next time.